Hello, Modality here, and today I am reviewing Sword and Fairy 7, also known as Sword and Fairy Together Forever. This came out last year, in 2022, and I had no idea about this entire franchise, which apparently is extremely popular in eastern regions of this world, and all I have to say is that I think they did good with this game. I really do. I had a great time with it. It was about 20 to 30 hours. As soon as I felt like I was going to get bored, they added the final set pieces with the battle and I was reinvigorated. I'm like, okay, I can do this. Finish the game in about 30, 32 hours in total. And here's the footnotes. Here are the, the main points I'd like to bring down about this game. You do not need to play one through six. This game is forward thinking and that they're thinking, okay, we're bringing it to the Western audience. We need a new story. We can maybe have characters or dialogue or collectibles that tell you the lore of the previous games. But right now it's just an individual story about four main characters and their journey through this world and the dramas that they have to deal with through it. So with that though, this is an action RPG. There is no turn base. There is some level of combat that is kind of reminding me of Final Fantasy XV where Prompto and Noctis or Gladius and Ignis could like basically do like tag team attacks where you have to hit a QTE. And on top of that, you also have cooldowns for your abilities, which you can swap out and hold, let's say, right bumper to change to a second level of abilities, very similar to Final Fantasy XIV if you ever played that using controller. When it comes to the movement, the movement is very weird. It just doesn't feel like you are running on the ground. There's no, like, inertia or movement. I don't know what it is that is making me feel like it's weird. The movement is weird. But hopefully when I review maybe another, maybe eight of this game, maybe I'll actually have a, a good example to fully concretely get my thoughts on this movement system, but uh, I, I was fine with it. It just felt a little weird compared to other RPGs I was playing. Hopefully I can explain this later in future reviews for RPGs because it is just making me insane for the couple of days, like trying to figure out what the hell this movement feels like to me. But other than that, moving around or over that speed bump. I have to say that it has cooking, right? You have your buffs for like 30 minutes, 15 minutes. There's also like a proc that can happen where your, your drink can get from like a 10 to a 15 or like a five to a 15% bonus. I rarely got the not awesome thing. Maybe they increased the probability, but I was getting like the awesome, the best buff most of the time. When it comes to main characters, you have a character that is from uh, the, the spirit, like companion type gameplay where her ability Abilities basically make it so that you would use spells from the spirits that you have basically made a contract with. There's like a whole drama thing about having these spirits, these Pokemon-esque beings being restricted by binds and like the idea that that is bad. So the way that the protagonist, the hero overcomes that is by making contracts with people like they're actual humans or that they're on the same level as them intellectually and spiritually. And so with that, you get all these cool new spirits, which are called spirits, and they're actually passive buffs when you feed them things called spirit fruit. Now, there's things like crit and damage reduction, but the ones I liked the most were the ones that increased my drop rates, increased how many drops would happen after a battle was done, increased my XP and increased my gold. There was also tree kits for gold and XP, and I basically did that immediately, and it sped through the game so much faster. I love that pace of just getting my XP that fast, getting all that gold. I never had to worry about running out of gold ever, and I didn't have to grind. There was no me going into one area and grinding. There would only be the fights in between A and B, and I would do the side quests between A and B, and that was it. And when it came to doing side quests, I would get some of the best trinkets in the game for my characters aware, which was perfect for the end game bosses, where it felt like I finally had accumulated all of this really powerful gear. Even the swords were fully leveled up where you basically have three slots and you can use jewels or gems to basically pick one or three different choices three times. And that was the equipment of basically the entire game. It was just like the armor, the boots, none of that. It was just weapons had jewel slots to put jewels in. It was simple. It didn't feel like it was completely like Path of Exile level, which I kind of enjoy. And the only complaint I have with the equipment is that I felt 
like I had so many resources at the end that I kind of wish you could put jewels maybe into like something else or maybe there'd be another trinket slot you could unlock with like let's say using the materials you would use to get the jewels specifically like that would be kind of cool because there was a lot of loot I had that I just never used even from not grinding in the game when it comes to the four characters you have basically an archer a sorceress a tank and like the glass cannon dps mage kind of like all round does everything which is the main character of the story following the other three side slash main characters when it comes to the range character they have a thing called bugs which is like okay you have to use this bug to proc the other bugs that you have that basically are like smoke bombs or like grenades but they're like insects that you throw where it doesn't feel too complicated but it's simple enough you just okay proc that throw these when your characters get to a very high level they do unlock a ability which has a cool cinematic with it i think all the cinematic abilities the huge cooldowns are aoe's and it felt like it refreshed the combat making it more interesting on top of the tag team cinematics that would happen adding that and having it actually be powerful and do a lot of damage was very rewarding to kind of like see visually and then just see those damage numbers pile up. So I enjoy when games do that and this game did do that well. But uh, yeah, when it comes to some of the problems I had, uh, there's a card game which I did enjoy quite a bit called Heaven and Earth. But the tutorials were kind of confusing and then it only took me a while to realize that your cards where it was like a ground and a ground unit would attack each other. So you have to find the right element to trump that kind of like a rock, paper, scissors game, and then use that to charge up mana to use other cards. It's tutorial was horrible. It was like, I kind of get it, but the tutorial needed to be way more in detail of how this works, or at least hint you in the direction to something that would tell you more about how the game works. Cause it's just, you talk to these little like leaf guys that are very cute. You get a card and you move on and that was pretty much it for those types of games i enjoyed it and it did cut off a big burnout phase that i possibly could have been going into if there wasn't something completely different from the rpg kind of cutting up uh in between like doing side missions main quest and attacking and cooking having that card game did refresh my memory as well as all the cool puzzles in the main story that drastically changed for no reason i fully appreciate just new puzzles like i don't think there was any repeating puzzles barely in this game besides like the same puzzle of taking a crystal and throwing it against another one in this one ice area but when it comes to huge set pieces for puzzles it was very good and the cinematics actually seem like they're getting there to like very good visual status like i feel like in the next game the cinematics will be like two top-notch triple a but it did have a little bit of scuffness to it i will say it had charm, but the cinematics were a bit scuffed. I don't know what to say, but it was like they didn't have enough time to render the cinematics. So they cut that bitch in like 75% of the time versus 100% of the time it needed to fully render in engine. And when it comes to the equipment tab of changing your outfits, I was having some really bad FPS issues where my FPS would just die or like I couldn't get out of the menu. And it would only happen when I would click on the outfit and then go to default image for the skin on a weapon and it would just kill it would just kill the equipment tab to the point where i was like oh my god i can't even use the the pause menu like if i try to load it up it will just not run or i can't get out like it was very bad and then it went away but with that and kind of the scuffness of it i'm gonna have to give this like a 7.5 i still think it's a good game would i recommend it to everyone probably not i probably would recommend it to people that i know like rpgs and like chinese mythos just because this game was so out of the radar for everyone i talked to about it like they just had no idea what this game is and it's the seventh in the franchise right so with that i give it a 7.5 i will play the eighth installment in this game if it does come out because i did like what i saw in the seven and i feel like it could get improved to something like an eight or maybe even 8.5 in the eighth game which would be very fitting so with that thank you for watching please like the video if you liked it comment if you played this game or the previous ones if there's a favorite sword and fairy game that you like that not a lot of people know because there is one through seven now in this entire franchise and i'm only knowing about it now with that though i hope you have good rest i hope you get good sleep and i'll see you in the next video Bye-bye.